Today I'm going to go through uh, the charges um, against uh, Christian Soto. Um, I'm also going to provide a factual summary. Um, before that, though, I want to briefly describe just the charging process uh, here in Win and generally how it occurs here in Winnebago County um, and then how it's occurring with respect to Christian Soto. So uh, law enforcement investigated the crime. Uh, they you know, do the investigation. Uh, we aid in that sometimes where it's search warrants or, or the like, uh, which is what occurred here. Uh, then they present the case to us um, for charges. We apply the facts, the investigation that they've done to the law and determine what should be charged. Um, I think most people understand that. Um, here in Winnebago County, what usually happens is um, someone is initially charged by what's called a criminal complaint. So an, an officer, detective, prepares that criminal complaint, and they also prepare a factual summary. Uh, the charging process is not done at that point. Uh, as again, most of you know, we ultimately will take that case before a grand jury and indict that case. And, and the reason I discuss that is for a number of reasons. First, the charges that I'm listing today, um, there may be more charges, and, and I think there probably will be more charges at the time that we present this to the grand jury. Uh, we're still, you know, whatever, 48, hours roughly, even less, uh, 24 hours from the incident. And so it's, we're still, um, the investigation continues. It's not over by any means. Um, at the same time, we have charged Mr. Soto. I want to talk a little bit about what's going to happen at 1.30 today. So he was lodged in the Winnebago County Jail last night. Um, he'll appear at initial appearance court in courtroom B today at 1.30. Um, at that time, he'll be notified of the charges against him. And we will file what's called a petition to deny his pretrial release. We're obviously going to seek that he be detained while he awaits trial. The judge will ultimately make that determination. As part of that process during that hearing, we will present uh, a summary of the facts in this case. And that's both to justify the charges themselves, but to also show um, the court that Mr. Soto is a danger to the community. That factual summary will actually become, and the charges themselves will become public information. In fact, they could be right now, um, as of 11.30, they weren't. Um, one of the things that we're going to do is, for some of you who are going to show up at 1.30 today in courtroom B, um, our PIO will be there, and she will actually have the complaints and the factual summaries there for you. We're going to get into this. I'm going to read them verbatim to you today. Um, but at the same time, whether it's spellings of names, dates of birth, all of that, you can actually, we'll give those to you. Um, like I said, if they're not public information right now, uh, they certainly will be at 1.30. Christian Ivan Soto, date of birth, November 23, 2001, is charged as follows. Let me back up. There's two separate complaints. Some of you may recall that most of the incidents occurred in Rockford, Illinois. One particular incident, especially two counts of attempt murder, occurred in Winnebago County. So there's two separate complaints. At the time of indictment, there won't be that separation. But today, I'm going to refer to them as the city complaint and the county complaint. I'm going to start with the city complaint. Count one of one, count one of 11, pardon. On March 27, 2024, in Winnebago County, Christian Ivan Soto committed the offense of first-degree murder. That's the murder of Jacob Schupek. Count two of 11, March 27, 2024, Christian Ivan so Soto committed the offense of first-degree murder. The victim in that case, Ramona Schubeck. Count three of 11, on March 27th, Christian Ivan Soto committed the offense of first degree murder, the victim in that case, Jay Larson. Count four of 11, March 27th, 2024, Christian Ivan Soto committed the offense of first degree murder, the victim in that case is J.A.N., date of birth 4-1-2008. Count five of 11, Christian Ivan Soto on March 27th, 2024, committed the offense of attempt first degree murder, the victim in that case, initials SDN 69-2009. Those initials are because those victims are juveniles. Count 6 of 11, March 27, 2024, Christian Ivan Soto committed the offense of attempt first-degree murder. The victim, KIA, date of birth 5-16-2008. Count 7 of 11, attempt first-degree murder, March 27, 2024, 
Christian Ivan Soto committed attempt first degree murder, the victim Darlene Weber. March 27, 2024, Christian Ivan Soto committed the offense of attempt first degree murder, the victim Jacob Volman. Count nine of 11. On March 27, Christian Ivan Soto committed the offense of attempt first degree murder, the victim Kathy Gilfillan. Counts 10 and 11 are home invasion. Then on March 27th, Christian Ivan Soto committed home invasion with a dangerous weapon at 4715 Cleveland Avenue. Count 11 of 11 reads identically, but the address is that of 4803 Cleveland Avenue. Those are the counts within the city complaint. I'm going to go ahead and read uh, pretty much verbatim the factual summary, which is approximately three pages long, uh, underlying those offenses. On Wednesday, March 27, 2024, Rockford police officers responded to 2316 Holmes Street in reference to an individual being run over by a vehicle and possibly stabbed. Upon officers' arrival, they conducted a welfare check at 2316 Holmes Street, at which time they located a male and female deceased inside the residence. They were identified as Jacob Schubeck and Ramona Schubeck. Both victims appeared to have been stabbed. Witnesses advised they had observed Jacob being chased across the street by a subject who was later identified as Christian Ivan Soto. Witnesses stated they observed Christian Soto in possession of an unknown, possibly black object that he was hitting or stabbing Jacob with as he was lying on the ground. It was then observed by witnesses that the suspect entered a black Chevy Silverado, which had been parked in the driveway of 2316 Home Street, and proceeded to run over Jacob at the end of the driveway. Jacob was observed getting up and running back into his residence. Soto was observed running back into 2316 Home Street and exiting a short time later. Soto re-entered his black Chevy Silverado and was last seen southbound on Home Street. In regards to the events at 2316 Home Street, Soto was later interviewed after being advised of his Miranda rights by detectives. Soto admitted to being friends with Jacob and going over to his residence to smoke marijuana. Soto said he believes the drugs provided to him by Jacob were, quote, laced, unquote, with an unknown narcotic. Soto said he became paranoid after the drug usage. He said he retrieved a knife from the kitchen at Jacob's house and proceeded to stab Jacob and Ramona to death. He could not recall a description of the knife. Soto stated he then left the residence in his vehicle, and he recalled taking out the mailman. The attack on the United States postal worker took place in the 2200 block of Winnetka Lane. Officers located United States Post Office employee Jay Larson, who had suffered multiple stab wounds in his body in the front yard of 2217 Winnetka Avenue. He was transferred, transferred to a hospital nearby where he later succumbed to his injuries. Officers spoke with a witness named, with a witness who resided at 2217 Winneka Avenue. That witness advised he was inside his residence when he heard a commotion outside. He looked and observed a male battering United States postal worker, who he referred to as his mailman, in the grass area near the front of his residence. He observed the suspect on top of the mailman punching him. He said he opened his front door, he heard the mailman, he heard the mailman yell for him to call the police. As he dialed 911, he observed the suspect begin to walk towards his front door. He said he quickly locked the front door at that point and continued to watch the incident through his window. He watched the subject walk back to a black pickup truck nearby and retrieve a knife from the vehicle. He described the knife as being distinctive due to have it, it having an orange handle. The suspect approached the mailman again and stabbed him numerous times in various parts of his body. He stated the suspect entered the driver's seat of the pickup truck, drove forward, and ran over Larson. He said the suspect struck a parked vehicle nearby. The suspect reversed the pickup truck and ran over Larson a second time with the vehicle. The witness said the pick, pickup truck briefly stopped and he observed the suspect run away between the houses nearby. The witness was transported to District 2, Rockford Police Department, where he was shown a photo lineup. He possibly positively identified Christian Ivan Soto as the individual he observed stabbing the United States postal worker and running over him with his truck. Soto, as indicated above, was interviewed after being advised of his Miranda rights. He admitted that he recognized the mailman who was walking in the street 
holding mail that he was delivering, he admitted that he stabbed the mailman and tried to run over him with his truck. Officers also began to receive 911 calls about an attack at 40, or I'm sorry, 4803 Cleveland Avenue. Upon their arrival, they met with Darlene Weber and her son, Jacob Bullman, and her daughter, Kathy Gilfillan. Officers learned the suspect, again, later identified as Soto, forced his way into the residence and was armed with a katana-style knife. Darlene had just opened the door to the residence to allow, to allow their dog outside. At this time, Soto appeared at the doorway and stabbed Darlene in the left side of her face by her left eye. Soto then entered the residence and attacked Jacob and Kathy, who attempted to fight Soto off. Kathy sus sustained a stab wound to the lower left side of her chin, and Jacob sustained a laceration to the upper left side of his forehead and also the inside of the left side of his ear. Jacob was unsure if he was stabbed or if he sustained the injuries from Soto punching him. Jacob advised he stru struck Soto with a syrup bottle, at which time Soto left the residence. Darlene, Jacob, and Kathy were all transported to a hospital where they were treated for non-life-threatening injuries and were later released. Again, after being advised of his Miranda rights, Soto admitted to entering the residence and attacking three people with a knife. He recalled the residence having a pit bull and the dog biting him on his leg while at the residence. He fled the residence on foot. Officers were then flagged down by subjects being st were then flagged down about subjects being stabbed at 4715 Cleveland Avenue. As officers were responding to the multiple reported crime scenes, Rockford Fire Department was flagged down by a female in the 4700 block of Cleveland Avenue who reported additional injured persons at 4715 Cleveland Avenue. Within that residence, officers located two injured juvenile females, SDN and KIA, along with a deceased juvenile female, JAN. They were deceased within the basement of 4715. She was deceased within the basement of 4715 Cleveland Avenue from apparent trauma to her health. Juvenile SDN, who had been transported to a local hospital, sustained an ulnar fracture, multiple lacerations to her head, and bruising to the left side of her torso. Juvenile KIA sustained several bruises to her left shoulder, left arm, and left leg. Detectives spoke to KIA. KIA spent the night at her friend JAN's house. The two were in the basement watching a movie on a laptop in JAN's J. A. bedroom. SDN was upstairs. SDN came downstairs and told them a man broke into the house. The suspect then came downstairs and was holding Jan's softball bat. The suspect called them bitches and asked where the gun was. The girls ran to the corner of the bedroom. He started swinging the bat, striking all the female victims. KIA was on the floor and curled up in the fetal position and the suspect struck her on her left side. JAN was also struck a few times and collapsed. The suspect stopped and ran out. KA then ran outside shortly after and flagged down officers. KA described the suspect as being covered in blood when he arrived. She described him as a male in his mid-20s, tan skin, black hair, and a, and a bowl cut. She stated he had on a beige hoodie and blue jeans, being approximately five foot tall, and he was a little taller than her. She described him as skinny. Detectives spoke with SDN. SDN stated she was in the kitchen fixing something to eat. The suspect entered the unlocked rear door. The suspect grabbed one of Jan's bats and started walking around the first floor. Somehow he didn't see her. She ran downstairs to warn the other girls. The suspect came downstairs and started swinging the bat. Jan got hit a lot and went unconscious. He stopped, said, I'm going to get a gun, and went back upstairs. They could hear him walking around, and KIA called the police. SDN said the subject, subject, suspect had blood on him and dark hair and tan skin. He was wearing a gray sh sweatshirt and jeans. Soto was taken into custody. When taken into custody, he was wearing a gray sweatshirt and blue jeans. He was covered in blood. 
He had minor lacerations to his hands and was treated and released from the hospital. After being advised of his Miranda rights, he explained that he beat up and stabbed the mailman when he saw the police arrive, so he ran. He explained he ran, he ran to a house that had a garage with a motorcycle in it. He went to the back door of the house and entered through the rear unlocked door. That described house was 4715 Cleveland. He said he found a bat in the kitchen. He recalled hitting the three kids in the basement with the bat. A bat was located in the upstairs bedroom with blood on it. That's the city complaint. With respect to the county complaint, there are two counts. Count one of two, that on March 27, 2024, in the county of Winnebago, Christian Soto committed the offense of attempt, attempt first-degree murder. And the victim in that case is Lindsey Craig. Count two of two reads nearly identical. Christian Soto is charged with attempt first-degree murder. The victim in that case is Keith Farney. The facts underlying the factual summary for this complaint. On March 27, 2024, police responded to the area of Florence Street and Eagleston Drive in Rockford, Illinois, for a report of multiple stabbings. Upon arrival, Rockford City and Winnebago County personnel saw Soto fleeing from two stabbing victims with a knife. He was taken into custody. During the investigation, it was learned that Soto had broken into multiple homes nearby in Rockford, in city of Rockford jurisdiction and in doing so, had beat a young woman to death with a bat, stabbed two adults to death, and ran over a mailman who died from his injuries. Soto then forced his way into 4624 Florence Street, Rockford, Illinois, by breaking a window, and he began attacking Lindsey Craig with a knife. Craig fled the residence, and Soto chased her on foot to the front yard area of 2129 Eagleston Road, Rockford. This was captured on camera. Once at this location, Soto continued to attack Craig with a knife, causing multiple injuries. A passerby, you heard the sheriff talk about a good Samaritan. A passerby, Keith Farney, F-A-H-R-E-N-Y, was driving by in his gray Jeep, Illinois, in his gray Jeep, and saw this happening. He stopped to intervene, and Soto began to attack him with a knife, also causing multiple injuries. Soto entered Keith Farney's Jeep in an attempt to steal it. Farney pulled Christian Soto from the Jeep, but again was being attacked with a knife. It was at this time the police arrived and took Soto into custody. When doing so, Soto dropped the edge weapon he was using at Lindsey Craig's feet. Both Craig and Farney saw Soto taken into custody and confirmed that he was the subject that was attacking them with a knife. Both Farney and Craig are in serious condition. Craig is currently intubated at a local hospital in Soto, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, Craig is currently intubated at a local hospital. So I'm gonna to attempt to do a bit of a summary in terms of the addresses. The first address was 2316 Holmes Street. And it was that address that he killed Jacob Schubeck and Ramona Schubeck, who, as the factual summary indicates, he knew. The second address was 2217 Winneka Avenue. That was where the murder of Jay Larson occurred. The next, we believe, to be 4715 Cleveland Avenue, which is where the juveniles were attacked and J.A.N. was murdered. Next, 4803 Cleveland which is the attempt murders on Weber, Volman, and Gilfillan. The last address being 4624 Florence Street. Those are the attempted murders of Lindsey Craig and Keith Barney. I have to say this. Soto was presumed innocent unless and until convicted, uh, found guilty by a jury or a court of law. As I mentioned, at 1.30 today, uh, we'll be seeking his detention. I'm confident that he'll be detained pretrial. We'll also provide you with copies of these complaints and the factual summary. 
keep in mind, as I mentioned earlier, um, the charges um, are likely to um, be different or, or there'll be more charges um, at the time of indictment um, and also that this investigation continues. This is the information that we know right now.